So I'm writing recall because this was from Friday, and I had two more examples I wanted to give you. So if you go back to Friday's notes and uh, where we were writing examples of subsets, you could list these next two under that. So the first one is. subset of the set 1, 2, 5, and that would be a true statement. Um, subset can be, can be one of two things. It can be a snippet. I say that word um, because you're, it's like a snapshot. It can be parts of a larger set, or it actually could even be the entire set itself. Um, if it said the set 1, 2, 5, is a subset of the set one, two, five that is allowed. It's rare, but it is allowed. Um, so that one is a true statement. The next one we said, I think I told y'all write it, and then I came in and I said it is not a subset because the numbers here, the letters here, need to come from the larger set, and they don't. P, Q, R, S. The problem is Q and S. Right? If we're color coordinating this, this is a problem. As you look over here, there is no Q, there is no S, so that can't be a subset. Okay, some more vocab words that you should be familiar with. Intersections and unions. Let you write that and then I'll explain. Intersections and unions. So let's start with what an intersection is. I'm going to erase this so that I can move my notes up. An intersection, perfect demonstration, like doing this with your fingers. 
It's the set of elements that are common to both sets. The way you say intersection without writing it out is this, what looks like an upside down horseshoe, I like to think of it as a lowercase n without the, you know, the initial little tag, I guess. But think, the way I write it, lowercase n in the word and. And here's why. If I'm talking about the intersection of two things, two sets, I'm telling you that the requirement is the elements have to be present in both sets. That's what and means. And means you have to meet two requirements. This and this. Does that make sense? So think of the symbol for the notation for intersection section as the lowercase n and the word and and hopefully that helps you wrap your mind around okay so I have to meet this and this I have to look for both let's look at an example we got to write the sets out first so given set a looks like this And set B looks like this. Find the intersection of A and B. know the notation you know let's say we're already to the chapter R test and I gave you a problem like this you cannot come up to me and say Miss Holcomb <clears throat> what's that mean you can't do that you got to know what the notation is so that's why I try to give you stupid corny ways to remember think of that as a lowercase n and the word and which would mean tell me the elements or the numbers that are in a and in B. So you look at the two sets and you identify what they have in common, right? So if you look at it, what do they have in common? They have three and five. Hear what I, hear what I said? I said and five. They have three and five in both of them. So the way you would write your answer here, the way that I wrote it, Leave that as the directions. You would say that and the intersection of A and B is the set 3, 5. Now, here is a visual. Since, we were, since our set was numbers, you could write the letter in there. Tyler will take that airplane and we'll throw it out the window. Um, since the set was numbers, you can write the letter of the, like this is set A, this is set B. If your set is letters, then you want to write the name of it on the outside of above it so you don't confuse that as an element in the set. But you could list A exactly how it is, you could list B exactly how it is, but when you came to the numbers 3 and 5, you would not write it over here and again over here. You would write it right here in the middle to show that, hey, these two numbers are both sets. 
Does that make sense? So that is the intersection of sets A and B. This is called a Venn diagram, by the way. V E N N. It's very helpful when organizing um, information. Let's do another example before we talk about um, union. Are y'all good with that? Can I change the screen? Okay, here's another example, a little more challenging. intersection of the real numbers and the imaginary numbers. Find the intersection of the real and imaginary numbers. Okay, so you got to think back to Thursday. What are the real numbers? Just not list them, but like just describe to me. I remember I said a real numbers includes Rational, irrational, decimals, right? Ugly numbers, pretty numbers, number zero. What does imaginary include? Mm -hmm. Not a trick question. Imaginary numbers includes I to indicate it's imaginary, which means at some point it came from the square root of a negative number. So if I ask for the intersection, I'm saying what's in both, tell me a number that's real and imaginary. Is there one? Why is zero so confusing? Yeah. Um, <coughs> zero is not imaginary because it doesn't have an imaginary part. Um, imaginary numbers are always of the form A plus BI, where A is your real number and BI is your imaginary part. If you say zero, there's no imaginary part. So it is one of those gray areas you have to think about it, but if you look at it by the definition of imaginary, it doesn't meet the requirements. So zero won't work. And in fact, there's nothing that exists in the intersection of real and imaginary. If you think back to that first day, I said the entire number system starts with it's either real or it's imaginary. So because it starts with those two categories, that means that there's not something in both. Um, so now how do you how do you write that? How do you say there's nothing? It's called the empty set. So I'm going to write the answer right here since that was a lot of writing. The answer is the empty set. I'm going to draw an arrow to indicate that this logo is the empty set. And what that means is a set without elements. Hence the reason it's called empty. Elements. My M started looking funny in the word elements. Um, there's another word for that symbol. It's called null. If something is null and void, N-U-L-L, -L, um, that means like scrap it, right? Stop. It's not there. It's empty. Um, that's another way to describe that, but in terms of math, we will say empty set. So if, if I give you a, a question and say, find the intersection of these two sets, and the answer is that there is no inter there's nothing in common 
then you would write the empty set. Notice you don't have to put parentheses, or what are they called? Brace brackets. You don't have to put squiggly brackets around it because that would be a set with something in it and null, the empty set means it's, there's nothing there. It's kind of the set way of writing no value. Um, all right, next vocab word, union. sets A and B that are connected or you could think combined or gathered together. The notation is what looks like a horseshoe or as I like to think of it is, where do you think I'm going with this? A U. A giant capital U without the tail. That's how you remember union. You need to think of the word or. Now I'm going to write the example and then we're going to answer and then I'm going to tell you how to remember the difference between union and intersection. So if we had the sets A and B like this, and I said to find A union B, that means I want you to tell me the set of elements that are in A or B or is inclusive. It means, okay, so list everything that's in A, list everything that's in B. If something repeats, you don't list it more than once. You just say, okay, that's already covered. So the answer would be that A union B would be, and I'm reading, zero, one, two, I've covered A now. I've already hit two over here from A. I'm not going to write it again. Then three, then four. Make note that you don't repeat elements. And then now let me explain how to remember the difference. If you are standing in the intersection of two roads, where are you? Think of the red light right there in front of Dollar General. If you were at the intersection of Spark Street and Nashville Street, you would be standing in the square where the two roads like cross, right? think of the four red, I would have red light, red light, red light, red light. Yes, that's the intersection. So I could say I'm on Spark Street. Yep. I could say I'm on Nashville Street. Yes. So intersection is when you are in both. Union, think of a blended family. Um, like I'm an only child for my mom, but for my dad's side of the family, I have three half siblings. So our blended family is me and then my siblings from his previous marriage. So we're all one big happy family. Think of the union, you know. We gather here today to celebrate the union of these two families. Does that help you with a visual? Here's another easy example. I always relate to food because I like food. 
Um, if I send you to the store and I say, uh, give me a sweet tea and a Snickers, which I would never say that, but give me a sweet tea and a Snickers, you need to come back with what? You come back with two things, right? That's the only way you come back and make me happy. Yes, right? Okay, if I said, go to the store and give me a sweet tea or a Snickers, there's three ways to come back. One way is just a sweet tea, just a Snickers, or you can say, Miss Holcomb, I just really wanted to make your day. I grabbed both. Did you still meet my requirement? Yes. So if you wrap your mind around going to the store and being told, grab this and this, that means you have to do that one thing, meeting all the requirements. If I say, go to the store and grab me this or this, there's multiple cases, and it's always the largest. It's the gathering of all of them. So which type of set tends to be larger? Union. Because it's, hey, all right, get this and this, and then now write one big set. Does that make sense? Intersection is like, woo, you got to be, it's got to be right, it's got to be in here, in here, and then you list it. Okay? Your homework is to finish the set worksheet, there are a few you need to skip, let me tell you. The word problems on the bottom, you're going to skip the ones on the right. Uh, that would be 32, 34, 36, 38. You're going to skip those, so you can X those out. But the rest of it I want you to finish. Do tomorrow, there's no flex today. You've got till 9.50 when we start first block tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.